All right, get ready to dive deep because today we are really diving headfirst into uh, one of the most debated UFO sightings ever, the Tic Tac incident. And you're in the right place to uh, separate fact from fiction, right? It really is a goldmine, yeah, for analysis. You've got credible witnesses. And we're talking military personnel here, official documentation, even video footage. I mean, that's basically unheard of in ufology. Yeah, exactly. This isn't some some blurry old photo taken from miles away. We're talking about trained observers <laughs> on a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, yeah. the USS Nimitz, during, uh, I think they were doing exercises off the coast of Southern California, right? Back in 2004. Yeah, 2004. And, and it's important to remember the Nimitz wasn't alone out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they were operating with a as part of a larger carrier strike group, mm -hmm. which included the USS Princeton. That was a guided missile cruiser equipped with some of the, you know, the most advanced radar systems in the world, the uh, specifically the SPY-1 radar. Okay. This thing is, I mean, it's serious tech designed to track hundreds of targets at the same time, even at incredibly long ranges. Wow. So, so when the Princeton started picking up multiple objects acting in ways that, that seemed to just defy physics, you know, it wasn't just, you know, just a blip on a screen. Like you said, it was a huge, a huge red flag. Okay, so this SPY-1 radar is picking up multiple unidentified objects, but what, what did they look like according to the radar? I mean, what were they seeing? So they were described as moving erratically at, at really high speeds, yeah. They'd be hovering and then suddenly like really accelerating in ways that our current aircraft just they can't they just can't do. And they were observed at different altitudes, too. I mean, ranging from around 28,000 feet to just, you know, right above the ocean. Wow. So they weren't just like stationary blips then. This was like a whole symphony of weirdness like happening right there on their radar. So, yeah. I, I mean, no wonder they scrambled some jets to get like a visual. Radar. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So the Navy, they dispatched two. F-A-18F Super Hornet fighter jets to investigate. Oh. Now, these weren't, you know, these weren't just some, you know, rookie pilots. We're talking about Commander David Fravor. He was a highly decorated pilot with over 3,000 flight hours under his belt. And uh, Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate, another really seasoned aviator with a ton of experience. Right. So these are the kind of guys you, you know, you want flying your top of the line fighter jets, right? Not exactly prone to, like, flights of fancy or, you know, mistaking a weather balloon for something extraordinary. Precisely. And what makes their account so compelling is just the level of detail and, yeah. and how consistent their stories are. So Fravor, who was the first to get to the scene, described seeing a white oblong shaped object just hovering erratically about 50 feet above this this like churning patch of water. Mm. He uh, he likened it to a giant Tic Tac candy. You know, about 40 feet long with no wings, no rotors, no exhaust plumes, nothing, basically no visible means of propulsion. And it was it was moving in ways he just he'd never seen before. And that's where the whole like Tic Tac nickname comes from. OK, so this is where it gets really interesting for me. What what happened next? So so picture this, right? You're you're Commander Fravor and you're approaching this thing, this Tic Tac, and you're just trying to get a read on what it is. Huh. And and then suddenly it just darts away to the south. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's moving crazy fast, yeah. like impossible speed. Wow. Fravor and his wingman, they're stunned, right? They've never seen anything like it. Okay, so it, it takes off. Then what? Did they did they go after it? Yeah, yeah, they did. Fravor and his wingman, they try to, you know, get a lock on the object, reacquire it, but it's it's totally gone, vanished. Wow. But but here's where it gets really strange. Remember that, that like, churning water that the object was hovering over? Right. right. Well, as they're, you know, circling back... The Princeton, they radio Fravor, yeah, and they tell him they're picking up the object again. No way. And get this, it's now 60 miles away to the north. 60 miles in like, what, a minute? Come on, that's that's insane. Whatever it was, it basically teleported. Exactly. It's. I mean, the speed is just mind-boggling. There's, there's nothing, nothing that we have right now that can even come close to that kind of acceleration. Wow. So Fravor and his wingman... They're then, you know, they're directed to a different rendezvous point, but they never actually see the object visually again. But another pilot who just taken off from the Nimitz did manage to catch something on his infrared camera. That's that famous uh, FLIR-1 footage, right? The one that was, uh, well, it was leaked and then officially declassified by the Pentagon a few years back. That's the one. Oh. Yeah. And and it's been analyzed like crazy by, you know, all sorts of experts. And there's still no, like, definitive answer for what it shows it's yeah. it's grainy but 
you can definitely see an oblong shaped object moving really quickly against the wind. Yeah, I remember watching that footage for the first time and just, you know, feeling like, okay, this is this is different. This feels significant. But you mentioned it was leaked at first. Why why was that? Why not just, I don't know, lead with the footage, you know? Like be transparent from the start. Yeah, it's a it's a good question and it kind of gets to the whole, you know, issue of government secrecy and and UAPs like for years there was a huge stigma, you know, with these sightings and Pilots didn't want to report them because they thought people would make fun of them or or would hurt their careers. But, you know, in recent years, it seems like people's attitudes are changing. It does seem like like the government is finally, you know, taking this stuff seriously. Right. We've had those congressional hearings. There are new guidelines for reporting these things and and even a dedicated office in the Pentagon to investigate UAPs. So what do you think changed? Well, I think there are a few things. One there have been a lot more credible witnesses coming forward. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's getting harder and harder to dismiss them all as, you know, crazy people or or hoaxers. Right. And two, the the technology that we're seeing in some of these sightings, like like the Tic Tac incident, is just it's so advanced that, you know, we just can't ignore it. Right. And three, I think there's a growing sense that you know that the public has a right to know what's what's happening in our skies. Okay, so we've talked about the witnesses, the radar data, the footage. What about, like, explanations? I mean, what are some of the leading theories about what this Tic Tac could be? So let's uh, let's get into those theories. I imagine, like, a lot of people, they hear this whole thing, and they're like, oh, it's just, you know, some top-secret military project. Yeah, it, it's definitely one of the, the more popular theories. And, I, I mean, you're not wrong to think that, you know, the U.S. military has a has a history, let's say, of, of developing some pretty experimental aircraft. Mm-hmm. You know, there are some folks out there that even point to projects like the B-2 bomber and the F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter as kind of like, you know, as examples of like just how advanced our tech really is or nor could be. Right. Yeah. But, you know. OK, but could could those planes, even with all their like, you know, fancy technology and stuff, could they move like like the Tic Tac did? That's the that's the million dollar question. Right. You are so, like most advanced, you know, experimental aircraft. They they don't have the kind of capabilities that were that were observed during the Tic Tac incident. You're right. we're talking instantaneous acceleration and, and changes in direction that just seem to completely defy like, you know, the laws of physics. Right. Yeah. Like that whole 60 miles in a minute thing. It, it makes my brain hurt. So so if it wasn't like a secret American project. What are what are some other like explanations? What are people saying? Well, there are always those you know theories about like foreign adversaries, right? Like maybe maybe Russia or China have you know developed some like crazy like game changing technology. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But those those theories don't really hold water when you you know when you think about how like how sophisticated the Tic Tac's movements were. Yeah, because if if like if another country had something like that, I mean we we'd know about it by now, right? Exactly. So so then that leads us to some of the uh, more, let's just say, unconventional explanations, you know, things like uh, atmospheric phenomena. OK. There are some scientists out there that have like proposed that what the pilots saw might have been like a type of plasma cloud, you know, or, or maybe ball lightning. Those those can like, you know, they can appear to move in strange ways. All right. OK. But, but but don't those things like usually happen during like, you know, s- storms or or when the weather's bad? Was there any like bad weather reported during the the Tic Tac thing? Not that I know of. From what I understand, the, the weather was actually like perfect for flying that day. Hmm. Interesting. So so that brings us back to an alien hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah. The, the big one. And and I know I know we're we're trying to like, you know, s- separate fact from from speculation. But but given everything we've talked, I mean, we're talking about credible witnesses, the, the radar data, the footage. Is it I mean, is it that crazy to think that that maybe, just maybe, what those pilots saw was something, you know, something truly not of this world. I mean, it's it's a question that people have been, you know, asking for for centuries, right? Like, are we alone? And and while we don't have any, any, t- you know, definitive proof, I mean, the Tic Tac incident, it, it makes you wonder, right? I mean, especially with all these other UAP sightings we keep hearing about. Yeah. It really makes you wonder if, if we're, if we're really alone out there in the universe. It really does make you think. So so after all this, like where where do things stand now? Like is there is there like an official explanation for for what happened for the Tic Tac? Well, as of right now, officially, the Navy is saying that it's, you know, it's still unidentified. But but I think the fact that they that they went ahead and, you know, they declassified and released the footage 
the fact that they're like, you know, they're talking about this stuff a lot more openly these days. It seems like, you know, they're, they're finally starting to take this, this whole thing a lot more seriously than they, than they used to, you know? It does seem like they're at least like acknowledging that, that something weird is, is going on. Oh, well, absolutely. And, and there are a lot more people now too in the government and just, you know, regular people who, mm. who want like some real answers. Yeah. You know, they're demanding a lot more transparency from the government when it comes to UAPs. Well, I, I think it's safe to say that uh, you've given our listeners a lot to think about today. What do you think out there? Let us know. <laughs> we yeah. may never know what the Tic Tac really was, but hey, that's, you know, that's part of the fun, right? It's a mystery that'll probably be with us forever. <laughs> but but I think, you know, maybe the real takeaway here is that the universe is just is just full of wonders, you know, things we know about and, and a lot of things we, we don't. 